Good morning, everyone, from the best city in the world, which is Cape Town, in the Western Cape in South Africa. And today I am going to present on the intervention that we are doing in Cape Town, in the Western Cape, um, as part of the Fundawande interventions. And so I'm very, very excited to be able to present to you today and just to give you an overview of what we are doing in the Western Cape. Some key points that I'd like to focus on today is that the whole fact that this is a cascade model. Uh, we've been calling it a government-led model, but it's partnering, partnering with government to go to scale. And for us, that is very exciting. And so I would like to go through what this model entails, why we chose the model, how we researched it, how we have chosen the best people to train to be able to deliver uh, the content of this model, and then what we've done at our evaluation. And after three years of piloting, what have been our biggest challenges and what insights do we have now that we are going to scale in the province, um, how we as Fundawandi can support the Western Cape Education Department towards uh, rollout, we're calling it, or towards scaling success. So this cascade model, which is basically training the trainer, is really the best model that we could have chosen to partner with government to go to scale. And what we do with this model is that we have our Western Cape it, um, intervention team from Funda Wande that first trained the Dub Western Cape Education Department, which we refer to as WCED, first trained their um, head office staff and their district staff to be able to deliver that same training to the subject advisors and then as the subject advisors become the trainers they deliver the material to the teachers at district level. It's been exciting to research this model, and I think what is what I can best sum up from the articles that I've uh, read and posted here is that the cascade model or the train the trainer model is effective because it can deliver many trained teachers quickly and economically. It relies on people to pass down this knowledge. And what is great is that as we train the subject advisors and they train the teachers, they become both subjects and agents of change, as um, quoted in um, the Cascade Model in Action. And I think that's amazing because the subject advisors are upskilled. They then take the knowledge that they have learned and they pass it on and they become the trainers. And the third reason why this model has worked for us is that it has been utilized to develop and to offer a continuous professional development. And the best model that I've read about that they've used this for professional development is in Kenya. And so, once again, I want to reiterate that we chose it because we were going to scale, even though we started with a pilot of, as I will explain later, we went to scale in 2023, and this model has been by far the most cost-effective, and we have been able to reach many teachers within a shorter period of time. So why was this model chosen? We already had a coaching model which existed in the Eastern Cape. That was our first intervention of in the one day. And then the second intervention took place in Limpopo. And that model focused on teacher assistance. So we wanted to test also a different model in the Western Cape to see what would be the best model to take 
our country eventually to scale. So we decided to partner with the government to go to scale. And this Western Cape model was chosen so that we could use existing personnel, existing people in the system, existing people even in the bureaucracy of the system to be able to train the teachers. And what better uh, personnel to use than the subject advisors? Because the subject advisors' role is to train, is to monitor, is to ensure that the content that the teachers receive is being delivered correctly, and then also to make sure that if there are any, any difficulties that they retrain or they have top-up training with the teachers involved and to be able to make sure that the rollout, that the scaling happens correctly. So now to come to the details of our intervention. And it's been an exciting, exciting journey, uh, not without its um, worries and without its uh, stresses, but an exciting journey nevertheless. So in 2020, uh, Funda Wande uh, met with the Western Cape Education Department officials. And after some time of talk, some time of negotiation, some time of, of figuring out what we were going to do, we signed our first um, MLA with the w WCED. And it was agreed that we would pilot in 50 schools, and in the, those 50 schools, they would use the Funda Wandi literacy material and the numeracy material. So our literacy material we referred to as Funda Wandi, FW, and our, and our maths material we referred to as Bala Wandi, BW. So the, in the first year, we implemented both Funda Wande and Bala Wande in 50 schools in seven of the Western Cape districts. So we started with 40 Afrikaans home language schools and 10 Isikosa home language schools. But we all know that we had a terrible pandemic that hit us. And so in 2021, after the fact that the children had not been to school for many, many weeks, we had to relook really at our delivery of this um, material. So in 2021, we had to amend uh, our MOA and we had to say, okay, let's go then. We will keep our 50 pilot schools, but the Western Cape Education Department, before they would go to scale before they would go to the rollout phase, would take 50 of their Afrikaans uh, home language schools and they would pilot that 50 schools just so that they could make sure that they were on the right track, that they could deal with all the distribution and the printing and everything. And I think that was a really good uh, amendment to our intervention at that point because uh, we had to look at, at the losses that the children had suffered during COVID. So in 2021, we had our Funda One Day pilot. In 2022, we had then a Funda One Day pilot and a Western Cape Education Department pilot. And then in 2023, we, we had basically ironed out most of the delivery issues, most of the uh, content um, challenges we then started our rollout, or what we would call our scaling. And we then started in 2023, which was last year, we started to scale and roll out to all our grade one learners in all 866 Afrikaans and Isikosa schools in the Western Cape. This year, we are in grade one and grade two, and next year, we will have scaled for right up to grade three. So that's been an exciting roadmap of our intervention 
and just the challenges we, we, we experienced, but also how we overcame it and how we can already be in that scaling um, time as we wanted to start our scale in 2022, but we had to extend it for a year. So our pathway to scale, just to reiterate again, in 2021, we had our Funda One Day pilot of 40 Afrikaans and 10 Isikosa um, home language schools in grade one. In 2022, we, we, we added another grade to our Funda One Day pilot. We went to grade two, so we were in grade one and two, and then the WCD, started their pilot in grade one. In 2023, our pilot is was grade one, two, and three, and then the WCD was in in um, grade one and two, and then all our schools, the rest of the schools in Afrikaans and Isikosa started the rollout in 2023. So in this year, we are still supporting the WCD pilot, our pilot has come to an end last year, and all those schools have been absorbed into the rollout or the scale of the project. So in this year, 2024, we are now in 848 schools in grade one and grade two in Afrikaans and Isikosa home language. And next year, we would have scaled to grade one, two, and three. So this pathway to scale has been good in that it's shown us along the way where we had to stop, where we had to relook, where we had to improve, where we had to um, strengthen our um, partnership with the government in order to reach where we are today. And this is just a graph about the number of teachers that have been trained in our scale, in our rollout. So as you can see, um, grade one is Ikoza, uh, language of learning um, teachers, 638. And in Afrikaans, grade one is 1,447. In grade two, for Ikoza, we have 624 um, teachers. And in Afrikaans, 1,376. And in the grade three, we have 614 Ikoza teachers and 1,395 in Afrikaans. So this takes us to close over 6,000 teachers once our rollout has come to an end at the end of 2025. We would have reached over 6,000 teachers and been able to train over 6,000 teachers um, on the Funda Wande material and on the methodologies that go with um, the material. A number of learners is, is, is quite um, mind-boggling, and I think it's exciting that our scale can reach so many learners. Over 220,000, I think, if you add it all up, because you can see Zikosa and Afrikaans, how many learners there are in each grade. And so our training has to be of such a nature that when it goes down to the teacher and down, and the teacher then trains the children, that the methodologies are correct, that they are training what they've learned, that they've not um, taken out anything or, or, or ignored anything or watered down anything, because we have so many learners that we are reaching, and we only have this one chance of reaching all those learners. So it's very, very important that our train-the-trainer model um, is the best that it can be. So who was the perfect role or candidate for the role of, of the trainer in this model? As I mentioned earlier, we wanted to use the people that were in the existing government structure. Because we were partnering with government to scale, we needed to use whoever was in the government, because Funda One Day as an NGO would not have the capacity to go and train um, those thousands of teachers um, and make sure that the teachers are doing the correct training or, 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 or delivering the material in the correct way to the children, to the learners. So when we looked at who were the most, who was the most 
fitted candidate for this role of trainer. We realize that the subject advisor in, is that person. And there are 67 subject advisors across the Western Cape. So the Western Cape consists of eight districts, which is quite far spread. So there are four districts in the metros, which is in the cities. Um, and then there are four metros that are rural. And it's specifically in the rural districts where the spaces between or the, or the distance between the, the areas and the schools is large. And so subject advisors have to travel. They also have to make sure that they are visiting the teachers that really need the help. So because their main role is to train and to monitor content, they were the perfect candidate to roll out this model. And so we worked very, very closely with the head of the staff at Western Cape Education Department, which, on, which consists of the subject specialists that have been um, appointed uh, to head up the different subjects and languages uh, for the Western Cape Education Department. So we've worked very, very closely with the head of foundation phase. We also work very, very closely with the head of Afrikaans for the Western Cape and the head of Isikosa for the Western Cape. And between Fundawande and the head office officials, we have been able to train the subject advisors every term of the year and also been able to deliver support with them for when they trained all the teachers. When it came to the rollout and all the grade one teachers had to be trained, that's where the subject advisors did an amazing job. And then last at the end of last year, they trained all the grade two teachers in 27 venues across the Western Cape. And they were the ones that were utilized to be the trainer for this model. And as we will get to how we have supported them, it's, it's been a good partnership in taking this model to scale. So it was necessary to, ups, to train and upskill the subject advisors because many of them, especially in the Western Cape, Subject advisors are generalists more, rather than specialists. There may be some who are more specialists in the, in the language, some are more specialists in the math, some are more specialists in the life skills. But we needed to make sure that when we were training specifically language or specifically maths and specifically life skills, that they knew how that all fitted in to the model. And because uh, we have an integrated model of home language and life skills, it was so important to upskill the subject advisors on how those two fitted together so that the teachers would understand how that fitted together, so that the teachers would be using life skills and be teaching life skills so much better, using it in conjunction with the home language. Many of our subject advisors have not been in a classroom as a teacher. They're there to monitor and to train. But they have not been in a class. And so sometimes often removed from that reality as they become, uh, you know, longer and longer in the role of a subject advisor. So it was really necessary to take them and to train them well, to make sure that they understood to make sure that they knew how to train, to make sure that they knew the content of the training so that they would be able to train well, but also be able to monitor well because that is what we needed, especially once the teachers started rolling out um, the content in, in, in the grades. So the intervention has followed this pathway to scale, as I pointed out earlier on, starting by, with a pilot of Fundawande, followed by a pilot of the WCD, and then moving into full rollout. And there was a baseline that was conducted with the 50 Western Cape Education 
schools the beginning of 2022. However, we could not complete the midline because the WCD, as they took over how to print, how to distribute, they really fell into lots of challenges with procurement, um, printing and delivery. And so the midline could not be done. But because the Western Cape Education Department is the only department in South Africa that, that writes external exter systemics exam with the grade threes, we will be using the 2023 grade three systemics to conduct or to conclude our evaluation in this year. So in every intervention, there are always challenges. And I've identified our three biggest challenges to this intervention model is that because we're reaching so many teachers and because we are using a cascade model, information often gets diluted, distorted, or deleted. And this actually affects the teacher not fully grasping the content. And then sometimes teachers either just don't do anything uh, if they don't understand or they choose the parts that they understand. And the way we have tried to mitigate this is to make sure that we recognize where information has been diluted or distorted or deleted and make sure that when we have top-up trainings that teachers are well aware of, of what the content should be. There's also been a big challenge with distribution of materials because we are in eight um, districts and the, 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 the distances are so far, especially in the rural areas. It has been a challenge, but we have also mitigated this by putting in place um, different um, stages of checking where the materials are and where they've been distributed and where there are shortfalls. So part of the insights that we have learned is that, first of all, you have to have buy-in. And with that buy-in, if we can build capacity in the system then and show the government that we have people that can help or that we can capacitate the people that are there already, then we can see a change and we can see a move, movement forward. Um, I think the biggest thing is to integrate your implementation into existing government systems so that people don't see it as something separate, but that it's part of the whole and part of their planning that they've already done. And it's already been, you know, good for us to make the, uh, the teachers or encourage the teachers to try the system out first before just trying to do everything right first time because there are going to be mistakes, there are going to be things we need to edit. And so... What we've learned is that get the teachers to do it and then get them to do it, them to do it right. We've also tried to, to develop uh, a monitoring tool to help the um, subject advisors so that when they go in, it's something simple, easy, quick to, to pick up on the monitoring of um, the implementation of the program. So it has really been a big thing to make sure that teachers uh, that first of all, subject advisors are equipped, that departmental heads are equipped, and that we stay abreast of what's happening. And so when we come to the fact that things can be watered down, we have tried to really provide different avenues to help. First of all, we have a WhatsApp bot where teachers can send in messages where they don't understand things, and we can answer them um, almost immediately. The WCD has a interactive poster where all the training videos, everything that they need, that they can go back to, they can just access that. And because our teachers have laptops and they have uh, internet, they are able to do that. We are, we have assisted our departmental heads by, by capacitating them through a beautiful coaching course that we, uh, have just developed and the first cohort of subject advisors in departmental heads have done this and have reported that it's helped them in coaching their teachers um, to success. Uh, we visit with the subject advisors. We do dipsticks into making sure that the, there's material coverage. And we also have even trained some of the teaching assistants in some of the 
um, districts. I like this one, which has proven to be really good in helping with the distribution and shortfalls of material is providing an intern in the head office and in the district offices. So we are trying everything that we can to make sure that what we learn, our insights, what we've gained, we can help support the Western Cape Education Department towards rollout success and towards keeping the scale of this um, model and this program in the province. Thank you very much. And as we move forward, I'm sure we are still going to have many, many learnings that we'll be able to share.